Chapter 11 The rain stopped just before sunset, not a moment too soon for Jessica. She and Winston had played every game they could think of. Twenty questions, truth or dare, charades. Truth or dare had led to an in-depth conversation about the social life at Sweet Valley High, which in turn had led to an onset of major league moping by Winston, who missed his girlfriend Maria. What if we're never rescued, Winston moaned. Maria will find someone else. I always knew she was too good for a geek like me. I always knew it was just a matter of time before some huge, handsome football player came along and stole her right out from under my nose. Oh, shut up, Winston. Jessica was feeling less than sympathetic. Her newfound affection for Winston was already eroding as his whining continued. In truth, Jessica was mostly irritated because Winston had started her thinking about her own family and friends. For the first time, she felt depressed. Jessica and Winston emerged from their shelter to find a calmer ocean and a breathtaking purple, scarlet, and orange sky. After setting up a fishing pole made out of a branch, some string, and a safety pin from the emergency kit, Winston settled down on the beach to construct the world's biggest sandcastle. Jessica knew she should make an attempt to rustle up some food as well, but she didn't have the strength. Instead, she wandered lazily along the shore, looking for pretty shells that might have been washed up by the storm. The island was unbelievably peaceful. The birds had started singing again, and their music was the only sound to be heard beyond the lapping of the waves and the rustling of the palms in the gentle breeze. Jessica sighed. The air smelled rain-fresh, and the island looked like something out of a cruise ship brochure. So how come I feel like crying? Jessica thought as she sat down on a big piece of driftwood at the far end of the beach. She leaned her elbows on her knees, rested her chin in her hands, and stared out at the sea. She had only been a castaway for roughly 24 hours, but it felt like months. Sure, she was getting along fine with Winston. Who'd have thought he would turn out to be such a good traveling companion? And she had missed a day of school, and her tan was a shade darker than it had been yesterday. But they still hadn't been rescued. They hadn't even seen a boat anywhere near the island. And Jessica wasn't looking forward to spending another night there, even though she had a nice dry shelter to sleep in. At the moment, what she wanted more than anything else in the world was to curl up in her very own bed at home. Jessica half shut her eyes, squinting at the sinking sun. What if she was stuck there forever? What if, despite what Winston had said, the island was uncharted and the rescuers never found it? Jessica pictured herself twenty years from now, still dressed in the same ragged bandeau and pair of shorts with snarled hair down to her feet. How was she supposed to shave her legs and brush her teeth? She imagined growing old with Winston, who would look like Rip Van Winkle after twenty years of solitude, his beard reaching all the way to his knobby knees. Ugh! Jessica exclaimed out loud, wrinkling her nose in disgust. What a fate! She would never see her family again. Elizabeth and Stephen would grow up and leave home. Stephen would marry Kara, and Elizabeth would marry Geoffrey. And Jessica, simply by virtue of being a castaway, would be deprived of her right to be maid of honor at both ceremonies. Ken Matthews would date some other girl, forgetting Jessica Wakefield ever existed. She would never get to be a senior at Sweet Valley High. She'd miss all the fun of graduation. All of a sudden, Jessica missed her family and friends so much it hurt. Lila, Kara, Amy. At that moment, she even would have been glad to see Enid Rollins, her twin's best friend. I'll never shop at the Valley Mall again, Jessica wailed to herself. All the new European fashions will come in at Lazette's, and I won't be there to buy them. I'll be wearing palm leaves while Lila wears the latest Italian leather outfits. It's not fair! Jessica sniffled, enjoying the new activity of feeling sorry for herself. I'll never get to dance with Ken Matthews or anyone else at the beach disco again as long as I live, 
No more greasy fries and double chocolate shakes at the Dairy Burger. Some other girl will take over as co-captain of the cheerleaders and change all the great cheers I made up. I won't get invited to the next bash Lila throws at Fowler Crest. Since I'm not there to share it, Liz'll have the car all to herself and Mom and Dad will probably give her my bedroom, too. They'll spoil her to death. They'll probably double her allowance. This last was too much for Jessica. A tear of self-pity squeezed out of one eye and rolled slowly down her cheek. She had to face the horrible truth. The best years of her life were going to be wasted on an island in the middle of nowhere with Winston Egbert. Feeling tragic and deprived, Jessica picked a twig off the sand and ran it through her hair like a comb. At that moment, she felt as if she would be willing to do just about anything if it would guarantee her an immediate airlift off the island. If she was rescued, she was convinced she would be a changed person. I'll be nicer if I get rescued, I promise, she said out loud, as if taking a vow. I'll develop the other side of me that Winston's been talking about. Jessica figured she had already gotten a head start on being nicer. She had become friends with Winston, after all. She was proud of that achievement. It sure wouldn't have happened if they hadn't been shipwrecked together. She continued bargaining. I'll make my bed every day and keep my room clean. I'll offer to do the dishes more often instead of always leaving them to Liz. I'll get a part-time job and start saving up money for college so Mom and Dad won't have to foot the whole bill. I'll... Jessica's plans were interrupted by a whirring sound in the distance. She stood up and stared out to sea, straining her eyes. A black dot appeared in the sky and grew larger. It was a helicopter heading right toward the island. Winston, look! Jessica squealed, springing down the beach and waving her arms. It's a helicopter! It's the rescuers! We've got to signal them! Winston abandoned his sandcastle with a triumphant whoop. Yahoo! he hollered, jumping up and down. This way, Mr. Chopper! Come and get us! As the helicopter approached the island, it dropped even lower. Jessica and Winston were both screaming at the top of their lungs and doing every sort of attention-getting acrobatic maneuver they could think of. Now they could see the lettering on the side of the helicopter. U.S. Coast Guard and the pilot could clearly see them. He waved a hand, and Jessica waved back. Hey, he looks sort of cute, she thought for a second. But she wouldn't have cared if Dr. Frankenstein's monster were flying the helicopter. Only one thing mattered. She was rescued! End of chapter 11